Welcome to the Knowledge Base Ninjas Podcast, where Gowri Ram Kumar of Document 360 finds the best SaaS self service knowledge bases in the world and then interviews their creators. Let's get started with today's episode. Uh, good day, everyone. Our guest today is Saravana Kumar, uh, founder of uh, Document 360 and CEO of Kovai Limited. So, Saravana, welcome to Knowledge Base Ninjas podcast. How are you do- doing today? Yeah, I'm fine, Gauri. Thanks for having me on the podcast. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Sirvana. So let's start with the questions. So I'm sure you had a chance to look at the questions previously. So uh, yeah, uh, just explain uh, your nature of business um, and uh, h- how did you come up with Document 360 as one of your product uh, product lines? Yeah, sure. Uh, we basically are a product company. We started the company back in 2011. So we started off, initially we started off with an enterprise product called uh, Bistock 360. It's a product uh, targeted towards Microsoft Bistock uh, customers. Uh, we organically grown the business and over a course of uh, four or five years, we, we were building quite a bit of uh, documentation for the product. And uh, we real, realized like, you know, once you reach a certain level of the documentation, like when you have like a two, three people writing the uh, content and there are constantly lot, lots and lots of changes happening, most of the products in the market, they just uh, suffered significantly. So typically, you know, the, the knowledge bases, uh, 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 we use the knowledge bases that come out of help desk products like uh, Freshdesk or Zendesk, et cetera. But their focus is predominantly on uh, on a ticketing system or a chat system, and they are missing a lot of features. What's required for a proper uh, knowledge base, uh, and that's when we thought uh, we could, you know, start off with uh, with a product. It looks like there is a market out there, and that's how we ended up uh, building uh, uh, Document Three Hundred and Sixty. Fantastic. I think you kind of explain my other um, uh, next question as well as to how you initially got into documentation. So uh, thank you for sharing some of your pain points over there. Um, and uh, are there any other specific moments that uh, made you build Document 360? Yeah, it's basically, you know, the pain points again and again, like, you know, like uh, 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 we noticed like uh, when two, three people are writing documentation, you need to have some kind of uh, a version control system in place and you need some kind of a workflow to manage uh, who is uh, writing the draft and who is approving because you don't want to take things to uh, live systems automatically. When we say live, it's basically in like an online uh, knowledge base that's available through the internet, like you do not want to publish it directly. So there's a lot of those uh, challenges uh, that came along, and that's what uh, it, uh, it turned out into you know, what we see today as uh, Document 360. Fantastic. So w- what, uh, what is your documentation process and who normally gets involved in it? Uh, there are different stakeholders when it comes to documentation. So if, if there are some technical elements of the product, it's typically written by the, the product team themselves because they know the product uh, very well. And the other segment could be our customer support team, like constantly whenever there are uh, there are uh, support tickets coming, it's basically, you know, they couldn't find the answer in the, in the knowledge base. And that's what uh, turned out into a support ticket. And we every time we resolve a ticket, uh, we have a process in place where uh, where they will evaluate where the gaps are in the knowledge base and they will try to uh, address it. And also there are some some elements from our marketing team as well because they wanted to, if there is a new feature, uh, uh, like, let's say, for example, there's an in-app assistant feature in Document 360, and that's a lot of value for the SaaS companies to have that feature. So then the marketing team will also jump in and cover certain aspects of it. And we also have a release team, like the QA, the QA release team, they do write uh, release notes. So you can see like, you know, it's a various uh, stakeholders and this is where things get complicated and you need to have like a robust uh, knowledge based system uh, uh, to, to address all these different stakeholders and making sure the whole processes are in place and then uh, it's able to cope with all these uh, changes from different stakeholders. 
Great. So uh, I'm sure uh, you do have other products uh, apart from Document 360 and some of them are a SaaS-based solution. So according to you, what do you think are the important factors when considering or creating documentation? Um, okay, the first of all, you know, like uh, what I've noticed is uh, people spend a lot of time on the product. Uh, they 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 spend tons and tons of time on um, polishing their product, user user experience, etc. But they typically, you know, like end up not having a good documentation, and this is very common. Even in our case, like you know, for the first twelve to eighteen months, we are spending a lot of time on the product, but we now neglected completely the documentation side of things. So I think I'll suggest, you know, for any SaaS companies, you need to keep it uh, parallel. Like you know, the moment you have a good process in place. So whenever, you know, like your, your product is progressing, make sure your documentation is also progressing uh, parallelly. Like don't leave it uh, out of sync uh, because it might be very difficult to come back and, uh, and, uh, and correct it in the later stages. So you should have like a you know, really mature process to, uh, you, you, you need to treat your documentation as, as uh, uh, give equal weightage similar to you, to your product, like how you're treating your product, uh, the, the, the usability improvements, et cetera. We constantly keep an eye on the documentation uh, uh, through, throughout the life cycle of the product. Great, yeah. So what role does documentation have in your customer service or success strategy? Uh, sorry, say again, please. So in your customer service or success strategy, what role do you think a documentation plays? Yeah, I think documentation plays a crucial role. Like as I mentioned before, like uh, if you if your doc if your product knowledge base is weaker, it basically you know like uh, it end up uh, resulting in some kind of a support ticket. I think the modern modern users like you know they really do not want to speak to your support. They wanted to resolve the problems as much as possible themselves. You know, like you, you're, you know, most of us would have experienced, right? We are, we do not want to pick up the phone to call our you know, customer support team of, uh, of your TV company or your, uh, or your telephone company, et cetera. If there is a problem, say, on your, in your mobile, like the first thing people do is Google it and find the solution and they try to fix it themselves. So it's getting more and more important. Uh, the, there are more self-service users these days because they're very well-educated and they want to resolve the problem themselves. So from a customer server, ser- service and customer success point of view, the, the, these days, your self-service knowledge base plays a very critical role. If you don't address it, you might end up with unhappy users, unhappy customers, uh, and also potentially increasing your support, and which results in, a, in a, you know, like a, uh, there may be a time delay and there is a cost associated with uh, serving, supporting those customers. You can avoid all those things by having like a really good uh, knowledge base uh, solution in place. Great. You did uh, share some of your pain points in the beginning of our conversation and uh, that kind of made you create uh, Document 360. So after introducing uh, a quality documentation into your process, uh, what kind of reduction in workload have you seen? Um, It's very difficult to give an exact number, but for sure, like, you know, like uh, we have uh, certain features in the product uh, where uh, where we have an analytics feature that tells you about the, the the searches what people are making in your knowledge base, and we have seen like you know like a, and it also there is a kind of a, we, we measure the deflection whether you know people are able to uh, search for something and they are able to find the answer or you know like or did they raise a support ticket. So it definitely for sure you know it reduced uh, uh, reduced uh, the significantly uh, the. Uh, there's uh, the support support ticket side of things, and also we are constantly seeing the more energy we put into our knowledge base, the product knowledge base. Like uh, the traffic is increasing uh, uh, month on month, we keep on track of that. So it definitely, you know, like uh, from uh, uh, we don't have exact measurements, but for sure, it's actually uh, you know giving a good customer support experience, and it's uh, definitely reducing our uh, support volume. Okay, so I think uh, redu- reduction in the support uh, um, volume and uh, calls is one of your uh, way of measuring um, having a good documentation. So 
um, I know most of them who I have interviewed as part of this uh, knowledge base uh, ninjas podcast, they have struggled to answer this question uh, because as you rightly said, there is no direct way of measuring um, the quality of your documentation. But um, have you seen any direct ROI since adopting to a self-service knowledge base? Uh, it's, it's very difficult to say, like, you know, like, uh, uh, no, I don't have a straightforward answer for this. Okay, great. So are you currently generating any organic search traffic from your knowledge base? Yeah, sure. I think as I mentioned, you know, when when, when you asked the question about like who who are the audience writing uh, knowledge base for us. So one of the primary uh, primary stakeholder is, is our marketing department. So we spend, uh, you know, a lot of time on, you know, like uh, 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 showcasing some of the certain features uh, 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 relevant in the in the knowledge base. And uh, even the release notes, like every time when there's a release happening, we make sure that the, the documentation is updated correctly. And, uh, and you know, they, there are a lot of keywords buried into all these uh, articles, like, you know, Content marketing is big and we have, you know, it's a, it's a big topic when it comes to marketing and people spend a lot of time on the website, uh, website content and they also write a lot of content on their blog. But sometimes they completely neglect the importance of having a really good knowledge base and how that can turn into a, like a powerful uh, content marketing strategy for you. So today, you know, if you go and search certain keywords like uh, uh, knowledge-based software or a help widget for your SaaS product, et cetera, like some of our content like that's present on our purely on the, on the documentation show up and the people come there and they're aware of the product and they do a sign up. And then eventually you know, we, we have, we had few conversions coming from the direction as well. So these days, you know, from a marketing perspective as well, it's pretty important, especially if you're a SaaS company, you know, with a, with a, a working on a tip, typical digital marketing kind of a customer acquisition strategy. It's very, very important. You spend enough energy on the on your knowledge base as well, because that will eventually become one another content channel for you to acquire new customers. Great. Uh, so, uh, Sarvana, if uh, for others, are you, I normally ask a slightly different question, but for you, I would like to understand um, um, what are your top three features from Document 360 you would like to talk about today? Uh, one is the, the category management feature, because this is something, you know, I... I even though it's a very preliminary thing, you know, like you need to structure and or categorize your articles in a nice way. I've seen like most of the products got a very poor implementation of, you know, how you can add add categories and then, you know, move categories, uh, uh, you know, move articles between categories, all those kind of things. And that's one thing I, I really, you know, like uh, uh, like about uh, Document uh, 360. The other, of course, is the editor. Like when they, for any knowledge-based product, your content writers are going to spend a lot of time on your editors. That's the area where, you know, you keep on uh, editing uh, editing the content. It's like, you know, like a Google Google Docs kind of an interface, what we have supporting both Markdown as well as HTML. So you can easily switch between the editors. And that's something really I like because uh, you, can, you can address both the type of writers, either, you know, like a te technical software writers, so whom they, they, they generally prefer markdown editors because uh, the formatting is all similar to code. They can do it very quickly. But for some advanced business users or typical uh, tech writers, uh, we also support HTML editor. Those are two top features. And apart from that, there are a lot of interesting features in the product. And I would say like the in-app assistant is one another feature. I really like it because what I've seen is in a lot of SaaS companies, uh, inside their application, like uh, they need to have a lot of uh, help content. Right? For example, they may have a setting screen and some kind of a user configuration screen. Uh, typically, they try to you know build a kind of in-app uh, uh, help, some kind of in-app help that can be completely replaced by using Document 360. So you can say if the user is inside the specific page with a specific URL, and if they click on that help icon, a, a specific content can be shown. So this is can be easily achieved using Document 360, and this is one of the one of the important feature. Uh, you know, I really like in the product. 
Okay, great. So that's category manager, editor, and in-app assistant are your top uh, three picks from the portal. Fantastic. So that kind of brings me to the rapid fire round. Um, so are you ready? Yeah, sure. All right. So it's a rapid fire questions. Uh, who have you learned the most about documentation from in your career? Uh, I think I can't pinpoint one person. Uh, there's a lot of people. Uh, you know, I used to have a good friend at Microsoft. Uh, she, you know, from this is coming from a, from a BizTalk uh, server days. Very passionate technical writer. I learned uh, quite a bit, uh, bit, bit from her. Yeah. Fantastic. So, can you share a documentation related resource you have consumed recently? Uh, I think nothing comes to my mind. Could be anything, today. blog or. Uh, any LinkedIn article? It could be anything, because I know you read a lot. Uh, yeah, I think uh, recently I've been spending a lot of time on the API documentation side of things. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I can't pinpoint a specific article, but uh, I'm reading quite a bit on, you know, like uh, because API is another big area for any SaaS companies, and that's something I'm investing my time on. So I recently come across some really good topics from Postman guys. Yeah. Great. So this is a very interesting question. So what is the one piece of documentation related advice you would give to your 20 year old self? Uh, be, be passionate, you know, like, you know, it, sometimes writing documentation could be a really challenging thing. You know, you need to understand the context of the user. Like you need to think from a user perspective. Uh, rather than from a writer perspective, like, you know, how the user will get benefited from that piece of content. Are we conveying the message in a proper crisp uh, crisp way? Because you can, you know, the same message can be uh, given in, in different forms, you know, you know, like uh, the, the shorter it is, it, it doesn't need to be in all uh, in long form content all the time. You know, it could be, you know, how can you represent it in a, in a, in a better way? Sometimes it could be, you know, like a simple, uh, simple pictures or, you know, I, yeah, there's, a, there's a famous saying uh, goes, you know, like a picture is equal to a thousand words. So now the videos are also taking a lot of, a uh, lot of importance, you know, things which you cannot explain or it takes a longer form in, a, in an article can be easily conveyed through a simple video content as well. So I think, you know, you know, you, we just need to be aware of the changes that's happening, the platform changes and, you know, these days, uh, videos are accessible. Like you know, twenty years ago, uh, it's not not possible to have like a video content that easily. So you need to adopt to change as well. But one thing is uh, for sure, you always keep user in mind. Who is going to consume that article or a content, and make sure they get the they get the information what you want to convey to them. Yeah, I think that's all I'll say. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Sarvana. I think that's a very good uh, piece of uh, advice uh, for anybody who would like to take their career in documentation or to say in any field. Yeah, thank you very much, Gauri. Thanks for having yeah. me on the call. Thank podcast. you for thank sharing you. your unique experience and your journey. So that was great. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Knowledge Base Ninjas podcast. Please head to iTunes, rate, and provide honest feedback on the podcast. See you next week.